All right, guys. This is a introductory video on Maki War training. This is Maki War I built myself. Um, the post itself consists of two pieces of one by four oak, white oak. Um, the first piece about solar plexus level. The second piece is about two thirds the height. The higher you make the second piece, the stiffer the Maki War is going to be. This Maki War is actually pretty, pretty flimsy. It's a pretty flexible Maki War compared to a traditional Okinawa Makiwara. Uh, but it was one of the first ones I built, and so it's, uh, it's been around. This is a new pad. I used to have duct tape wrapped around an old t-shirt, wore out. Um, and uh, leather is a much better striking surface, so uh, the duct tape will wear out, start cutting your knuckles up, and you don't want to do that. I took these two posts, uh, bracketed them together with a couple of bookshelf brackets, uh, deep bookshelf brackets in the front, shallow bookshelf brackets in the back, to give it more spring towards the rear and not so much spring towards the front. The whole thing is mounted on a 4x8 piece of plywood with uh, four pieces of 2x4 uh, spanning the length of the plywood. All right, and uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. This piece right here, just another couple pieces of t-shirt wrapped around duct tape. I used it for uh, conditioning my shins when I first started and now it's, it's too soft so I don't use this part anymore, okay? All right, the first thing to remember uh, when you're when you're beginning makiwara training, is that the makiwara is to train three things: your hip rotation, your kame, or the amount of effort you put into something, and your focus. Okay, those are the three things that the makiwara training is for. It's not to condition your knuckles. All right. So, beginning makiwara training, you want to get into a kind of a, a modified, comfortable front stance. Front foot turned inwards a little bit. Back knee is bent, so this is more of a fighting stance with the back heel on the ground. Okay, so from here, the hips are at 45 degrees. To execute a, a reverse punch, all I do extend my my pull hand, take a deep breath in, and then now here I'm pressing against my heel. So I've got a solid connection from my heel through the back of my leg, my right buttock muscle my right obliques, through my lats, my arm, and to, the, my, to, to my two front knuckles. This is relaxed, neck muscles are relaxed, shoulders should be relaxed, okay? Tensing with your core, okay? So again, and pulling back with the pull hand. important thing to remember is to force down with that heel. All right, so the, the first um, first time you want to you start your monkey war training, you want to start off with about 20 reps. Um, you know, it really depends on how quickly you progress. The more reps you do, um, if you're a beginner, chances are you're going to bloody your knuckles, and that is not what you want to do with monkey war training. Okay, bloodying your knuckles means you preclude training. It means you have to stop training and you have to wait for them to heal, typically two weeks is what it takes for your knuckles to heal. So, you know, start off easy. And, and when you start punching them off your world, don't start off, you know, full power. Start off nice and easy. Just focus on your hip rotation. Exhale on every punch. Exhale and tense the core, okay? I'm relaxed, 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 relaxed. Pow! Tension here. Solid connection from the heel all the way to the two knuckles. All right. That's how you typically uh, do a Makiwara reverse punch. Now there's a lot of other ways to do it. Um, as you advance, we can go into some of those things. Now, once you're regularly training with the Makiwara, uh, say you're up to 50 reps a day, you know, and, and uh, your knuckles aren't sore. What you'll want to start doing is after you do the punch, you want to work on retract. Connect. The idea is to start with the hips. Whether you're going this direction or this direction, you want to start with the hips and then use your core to connect your upper body to the hips. Okay? If I don't tense my if I don't connect with my core, if I don't tense my core, this is what the punch will look like. Alright? I have to 
to connect with my core and then tense here down on impact, okay? So that's the feeling you should have. Now on the retract, from here, I, I connect with my core, I loosen this up obviously, and I just whip with the hips and bring my upper body with it using my core, okay? So as you progress, this is what your Makawara training should start looking like. And eventually, you will get to the point where you do a single impact hit. Okay, that's probably a couple years down the line. In addition to reverse punch, uh, you can do some other strikes when you begin Makiwara training. Uh, Shuto strike from here. Going from the outside in, I can't get good rotation here because my back is against the wall, but, but uh, outside in looks like this. Make sure you get close to the Makiwara, rotate with your hips. Exhale on the impact. All right. You can also go from the inside out, and in this particular application, the hips actually rotate opposite of the hand. The first technique, the hips rotate in the same direction as the hand. Going from inside out, the hips rotate away from the hand. Okay, So that's a couple different applications of Shuto Strike. Uh, you know, this, this particular pad here, I use this when I first started monkey wire training for uh, for shin training to harden my shins. Uh, it's, it's pretty it doesn't really do the trick anymore. So now I have a, a heavy bag upstairs where all the material has settled down via gravity over time to the bottom. Bottom of the bag is very hard, and I kicked out with my shins now, and it, it does a pretty good job. Okay, but uh, no reason to waste room on the Makiwara. Go ahead and build yourself a little shin pad here. You can also use this uh, kick with a ball of foot. It's a good, good for focus. But again, the purpose of the Makiwara is not to train your knuckles. That is kind of a byproduct of Makiwara training. Um, don't bloody your knuckles, like I said. Uh, stay away from you know that macho garbage. The whole point of Makiwara training is to develop kime, focus, and technique. All right. This is the nuts and bolts of Shotokan. Shotokan is not a surgical martial art like many other martial arts. Uh, Wing Chun or some uh, some of the Chinese martial arts are more surgical in nature, going for precise uh, points of impact and things like that. Shotokan is a sledgehammer martial art, and this is the tool you use to develop your sledgehammer. 